Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for uh, <clears throat> providing leadership to uh, have a diligent oversight of the next gen uh, uh, process. It's very important. Uh, when the RTCA Next Gen Midterm Implementation Task Force was chartered in January, task force members were asked to achieve industry consensus on what steps must be taken over the next several years to deliver next gen benefits to users. The task force, comprised of over 300 members, released its report and recommendations in early September. <clears throat> the task force's recommendations do not focus on which research and development activities will lay the groundwork for an end state next gen architecture. Rather, uh, the report's recommendations focus on activities that can maximize the potential benefits on existing aircraft, avionics, and airport technologies in the near term. Well, some have reacted by saying, well, that's not really next gen. The report does mark an important milestone in the long history of air traffic control modernization. Without user buy in, the FAA's next gen efforts will fail. However, the direct involvement of stakeholders, financial officers in making these recommendations to FAA indicates a willingness on the part of industry to make the financial commitments needed to carry out the recommendations. Another valuable outcome of the task force is the clear call for collaboration across FAA lines of business. <clears throat> this will be critical to timely delivery of near and long-term next-gen capabilities. For example, the delivery of key platforms such as ERAM, uh, ADSB, and SWIM are the necessary infrastructure for next-gen. But without procedures, standards, and regulations, users will not be able to benefit from the technological improvements. Critical to maximizing benefits derived from technologies, both old and new, is the development of operational procedures overseen by the FAA's Office of Aviation Safety. I am pleased that Associate Administrator for Aviation Safety, Mrs. Gilligan, uh, is participating today, and I'm interested in hearing how the agency plans to streamline the development and implementation of operational and environmental approval processes. The task force report has been characterized as a confidence-building exercise between users and the FAA. Specifically, the task force stated that if the FAA can maximize benefits of past avionics investments, users will be more confident in making future avionic investments. I'm interested in hearing how the FAA will take advantage of this opportunity to work with the industry in delivering improvements. Well, ADSB is regarded as the backbone of next gen. It was not the focus of the task force recommendations. Unfortunately, there still is no clarity from the FAA on the business case for ADSB equipage. The task force has been praised for its work in developing industry consensus on what is specifically needed in the near term to deliver next gen. I'm interested in hearing from both panels what the best process is for answering the challenging questions surrounding the shape and size of ADSB. Finally, while it's important to set near-term goals, FAA must also be held accountable for delivering the long-term vision in a timely fashion. I'm interested in hearing how the FAA will allocate its resources to strike the necessary balance between answering the user's demand for operational improvements in the near term while maintaining efforts on the ground necessary to achieve the next-gen vision. The last thing we want to do is meet again on this topic five years from now, having invested billions of dollars and find ourselves nowhere near to a, modern, to a modernized air traffic control system. I'm sure that the user community shares my dread for a next-gen Groundhog Day. Uh, once again, I thank the Chairman for calling this hearing and look forward to the discussion.